Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today I'm talking about belts. So I don't know if it's because I review a lot of pants on the channel or if it's because I make and sell holsters, which I make and sell holsters if you're wondering, uh, but I get asked a question a lot and that's what do you recommend for a belt? What do you think about belts? Well, why do you like the Cobra belt? And I'm gonna kind of talk about the Cobra belt in general, the Cobra belts that I like, some of the features of them, uh, how they work, how I kind of use them, my whole system. So it's kind of gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be about belts, but it's kind of gonna be rambling a little bit about, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about belts. I'm gonna be giving away two belts I'll get to the details on that later uh, to save you the trouble if you want to hate on it or not. The two belts I'm giving away are going to be on Patreon uh, because I'm doing monthly giveaways on Patreon. So if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a platform where you can kind of get more connected with me. Uh, you help support content creators and that's it. I don't want to do a big spiel about it. If you want to know, I'll put link below, but that's how you're going to get into it, into the giveaway, and I'll talk about that more at the end. But let's get into belts. So 1.5 inch Cobra belts are kind of my main jam. I'm wearing a Cobra belt probably 99% of the time. Granted, I am pretty casually dressed for the most part. I'm looking, I need a haircut again, guys. Sorry, I always I always talk about needing a haircut, so I'll, I'll get one soon for, for those of you that are gonna make fun of my long hair. Anyway, Cobra belts. 1.5 inch are the main ones I like. I like 1.5 inch because I like the belt width. 1.5 inch refers mostly to the actual width of the belt portion. Uh, and then we have the Cobra buckle part is this part that allows it to snap together. I like these because they work into my system well. I, a lot of times in full disclosure, will wear the same pair of pants for several days or weeks sometimes before I wash them. Not necessarily wearing the same pair of pants every single day, but I may rotate you know, three pairs of pants and not wash those for a while. Uh, so I will, I have multiple belts and I will keep one belt on a pair of pants until I need to take it off and wash it. Uh, that kind of comes into play for a few things. The 1.5 inch Cobra belt, the reason a lot of people don't like these or don't wear them is because to get them through standard size loops, that was dusty, must have been making holsters wearing this belt. A lot of times you have to take the buckle out and thread this through because these won't fit through. Uh, I review a lot of tactical pants on the channel. I wear a lot of tactical pants. A lot of tactical pants are moving towards belt loops that will fit this without having to take it off. So that issue really isn't an issue if you're wearing a lot of the tactical pants that I recommend. Like right now I'm wearing the Vertex Delta Stretch, which are probably my favorite EDC pant right now. And the belt loops on them are big enough for the Cobras to fit through natively. So there's no problem in that. The reason I like Cobra belts is once they're on, taking them on and off is the simplest. The simplest of any belt out there, in my opinion, uh, you're not having to thread through and loop it in or click through ratchets or anything and those belts those types of belts have their uses they're, they're not I'm not saying anything's wrong with them but as far as if you need to make it to the toilet quick you need to get your pants off super fast this is the fastest easiest system and it always goes back to the same size that you have it set that's good for me I like that once the belt's on super easy if your belt loops allow it to get through Getting the belt onto your pants also is super easy. And actually I have one belt that I'm gonna to talk to at the talk about at the end that even solves the issue for smaller belt loop size pants. So Cobras are just very convenient for me and how they fit into my life. I like them, I like how they look. For the most part, your Cobra belts are gonna be pretty rigid. So carrying a gun isn't really a problem. And I prefer these styles of Cobra that are just like this. There are other styles of Cobra that have this like overlapping feature. I'm not a fan of these because I don't like to add extra width or bulk. Some people like these. This is, I'm not gonna talk about this belt because I'm not a fan of these styles, but this is a dangerous but good belt in multicam black. A very nice belt, but I don't use it hardly ever. Uh, it's a little too rigid and a little too stiff and a little too bulky for me, but if for like an OWB type setup, it's a really good belt. So all the belts I'm gonna be talking about are this style. Okay, so let's stand up here. 
so you can see my setup. So here I am with a Cobra belt on. Sorry, my mic's kind of getting in the way. We'll see if I can if I can keep it out of the way here without making too much noise on it. So 1.5 inch Cobra. This is my. This is how I have it set up. So these are the holsters that I make and sell. Single clip along the slide. Uh, you can also put a clip in between the gun and the mag, in which case when I'm running that system, I run the clip on the other side and put this belt, uh, the Cobra buckle on this opposite side. But this is my personal setup, Glock 19 with an extra mag, holster, single clip, Cobra belt buckle on the left side. That's my setup just to show you kind of how I have the belt set up. Let's get into some of the belts. I think all these belts are using actual Cobra buckles, uh, like they are, there are generic Cobra buckles and then there are like the real ones. These are all, all of these belts are using the real ones. All of these belts are made in the US as well, which is good. And all of these belts are from solid companies that um, aren't, you know, trash talking their customers and stuff. They're, they're, they're good customers, they're good companies. Some of them I know like Snake Eater Tactical, I would consider Chris the owner and operator over there, a, a friend of mine. So they're, they're, all, they're all companies that I can, I don't mind sending sales to. So there's some companies in the in the industry, some companies that make belts that I'm not really a fan of. Uh, but these are all good. These are all good dudes. They're built stupid. They're all built stupid, bomb-proof, strong. You know, you could basically tow a car with these belts. So they're they are overkill. But I like them because they're just kind of fun. They're neat. If you haven't owned a Cobra belt before, this click, the noise is very satisfying taking it on and off. Anyway, it's just, it's a cool, cool gear guys belt. If you don't own, everyone should own a Cobra belt or several. I own a bunch of them. So I'm gonna go in order here. Uh, I have no, I'm not gonna go in like a favorite order, but I'm actually gonna go in an order of how long I've owned the belt and been using it. The Snake Eater Tactical, I think it was my first, my first, it was my first 1.5 inch Cobra belt of this style anyway. Still have it, still in use, it's still in my rotation. The design, their design has changed a little bit. So this is in wolf gray. Uh, I think I think this belt comes in black and like coyote and wolf gray. Uh, he does offer different stitching patterns. That's kind of the main, one of the main differences as far as aesthetically of the snake eater belts. Uh, so I forget which one this is called, but I think there's three different stitching patterns that add a little bit of uniqueness to these Cobra belts. It's kind of hard to see the gray on gray, but it, is, it does show up a little bit more in other colors. This is a pretty standard uh, Cobra belt. This is back when he was doing Velcro, which I actually kind of prefer, but some people prefer, now he's doing without Velcro and he has a little keeper. So this end will go into a little keeper here and keep it, uh, keep it more secure, I guess. The Velcro is a little bit more of a pain if you're taking it on and off, I think, and the keeper does allow it to get a little thinner this way and a little less bulk. And obviously you don't have to deal with the Velcro uh, pulling this on and off if you're trying to be super stealth or something. Uh, so this belt is, it's a nice belt. Snake Eater Tactical is an awesome guy. He makes a lot of other good products, uh, but yeah. This one is kind of your normal standard 1.5 inch Cobra quintessential belt. Uh, super solid, great quality, great company, great dude, Snake Eater Tactical, they're that. And then we have this one, who's also another awesome guy. This is Boxer Tactical. So he is, he's over in Michigan and he's the most kind of authentically made in America, very open about where he sources all of his materials, all the way down to his like cardboard boxes and packing materials. He has an initiative kind of called honestly American. So if you are like hardcore, care about every piece of the process made in America, this is gonna be your best company to support. Boxer Tactical, Billy over there, I'm kind of friends with him. He's also a great dude, a company that I can highly recommend. They make some other belts, the Apogee and some other stuff that I've reviewed on the channel. This is their 1.5 inch, I believe it's the Zenith. Uh, and this is just, it's another pretty standard, and I, I'm not saying standard in a negative way, uh, rigid, good quality, good craftsmanship. Uh, but as far as features are concerned, this one and the Snake Eater are gonna be your standard, just your kind of stereotypical 1.5 inch Cobras. Again, I'm not saying that negatively. It's, it's a great belt. 
It's what I've used for years and still use. Love these belts. So Boxer Tactical is another great one. I got this one. This is from another YouTuber actually. And the be these belt reviews are kind of boring because they all pretty much look the same. This belt and the two previous, I believe are all available in black, wolf gray, and coyote. Now this belt does have a couple features that the other ones don't. Also made in America, also the same style for the most part. But a special feature that this belt has is it comes, I believe it comes with a couple escape and evasion tools that you can put on these hidden pockets on the inside. So these are little pockets that you can keep some tiny little escape and evasion tools like a little micro saw or a handcuff key. I don't think, I think I took them all out, but basically has a little thing that you can pull it out. So one pocket here and then another pocket directly in the back of the belt. So it has these two small pockets that you can keep secret stuff. I mean, you could probably wad up some bills if you wanted to keep it in there, whatever, whatever else you wanna keep hidden on your body, uh, that's really nice. So if it's for a traveling type kit or something like that, uh, it comes in handy. This is a belt oftentimes I'll wear when I'm traveling and I'll put a little, uh, little handcuff key and other stuff in the belt so I'm not forgetting it. And an advantage of that over putting something in your pocket or in a pair of pants is when you transfer your belt, you don't even have to think about it. As long as you're wearing a belt, you have those couple pieces of super hidden kit on you. Uh, I sometimes put that kind of stuff just in a pocket when I'm traveling and then I'll switch to another pair of pants and I'll forget it and it ends up in the pocket and then it'll end up in the washing machine and then I'll lose it or whatever. So keeping those stuff in your belt, if you're into that kind of stuff, this is, this is the unique feature of the uh, Black Scout survival belt. He's a cool YouTuber. He's into more kind of prepping and survival and that kind of stuff than I am, but you know, I kind of dabble into that stuff as well. Anyway, another great option for a belt, especially, like I said a bunch of times, if you're looking for tiny compartments on your belt, this is gonna be the one for you. And my last belt is my newest belt, but I've actually seen this a while ago and I've been meaning to pick one up. Uh, this just came out in OD and I reached out to him and he sent this out to me to try out, to test out, to get some feedback on, and I'm loving it so far. You'll see that this one is a little bit different than all of the others, the buckle. So you see the female end of the buckle here is smaller. And it has this extra bit of webbing here to connect it to the 1.5 inch belt. If you haven't figured it out yet, that means that this portion of the belt is slimmer than the other 1.5 inch Cobra belts because it's using a smaller female part. This means that even though I mentioned earlier, the big buckle isn't a problem for most of my pants because most of the tactical pants I wear can accommodate the full size buckle. This buckle will allow you to get into smaller belt loops without needing to take this part off of your belt. So it's kind of a huge plus, it's a huge win for people that didn't use Cobra belts because they didn't want to mess with having to try to feed this through and loop it back through and put it on and off. This solves that problem. So I like that because they saw a problem, they figured out a way to solve it. This belt, again, made in America. This belt is the only belt of the bunch, I believe, sorry if I'm wrong, but I believe this is the only belt of the bunch that comes in this OD green color. So if you're looking for an OD green belt, if you're looking for a belt that will fit through the loops of smaller looped pants, this is kind of your guy. All of these belts for the most part have very similar rigidity. I would say the Black Scout Survival, the one with the pockets, is the least rigid of the bunch. Um, and the other, three, the other three seem to be about the same uh, rigidity. So yeah, pretty boring video, but hopefully that kind of enlightened you into the whole Cobra belt craze for me anyway, showed you some good options from some good companies. Uh, and these are, yeah, these are, the, these are the four belts that I run primarily. You can't go wrong with any of these belts. Now, I'm gonna be giving two of these belts away, not my personal belts. You're gonna to get to choose your own color and your own size. Uh, so it's gonna be your belt, brand new, untouched by me. You're gonna get it directly from them. So two belts I'm gonna be giving away are this one, the Blue Alpha, with the smaller buckle here, and 
a snake eater. So both of these have a little bit of customization you can do. Uh, the snake eater with the stitching, and both of them you can get in a variety of colors. So thank you, huge shout out to Snake Eater for donating a belt and Blue Alpha Gear for donating a belt for this next month's giveaway. Now how that works, I'll also put links down below for all these belts if you just wanna go pick one up right away. Um, but if you want a chance to win either of these belts, I'm gonna be choosing two winners in this month's giveaway. How it's working is over on Patreon. Patreon, uh, I have two different levels. Well, there's really three levels. So you could donate a dollar, you could donate two, two, three, two dollars and twenty-three cents, or five, five, six, five dollars and fifty-six cents. And if you don't care about Patreon or the giveaway and you're not going to join Patreon or the giveaway, no worries. You can end the video now. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful or informative, hit that thumbs up button, get subscribed to the channel. Um, and then I'm going to be doing some kind of pseudo announcements after this, and I'm going to be talking about the giveaway now and Patreon a little bit. So YouTube still, the future of YouTube is still kind of uncertain. I think I'll be sticking around. I don't think I'm in violation of any terms. I've removed like two videos and some links and stuff. So I think hopefully I'm good. So I'm not trying to get you to go over to Patreon as a scare tactic because I'm going away from YouTube. I have every intention to stay here. Uh, but if for some reason my YouTube channel does get deleted, you could follow me on Instagram. Actually, follow me on Instagram anyways. If you're not, at Last Line of Defense, all one word. Facebook, uh, at Last L-O-D, I think. Those links are always below. And now Patreon. So Patreon, the giveaway, every month I'm giving away gear. I'm gonna be working with companies. Uh, so when I'm working with a company and they're gonna donate something, I'll mention it in a video because it'll be like a bigger, cooler giveaway. And some months I'll be giving away just kind of my own personal gear that I've used or some gear that I just have extras of. But I'm going to try and make the, the giveaway sweet. You know, I'm not giving away like my my old dirty underwear, even though you know some weirdos might want those. I'm giving away really cool stuff. Brand new as often as I can, lightly used by me other times. But every month it's going to be sick. So all you have to do to enter, you don't have to comment on anything. You don't have to share anything. You don't have to follow anyone. You don't have to do anything. Just if you are a 556 level Patreon on the first of the month, so I'm going to export all of the 556 level Patreons on the first of the month. If you are a 556 level Patreon, you automatically get entered into the giveaway for that month. Every month's going to be different. I'll try to sometimes announce ahead of time so you kind of know what's going on uh, if you can only support for a month or whatever. But first of the month gets you into the into the pool, I guess. So this month there's gonna be two winners, both gonna be belts. All you gotta do, well all you gotta do is go to Patreon, become a 556 level patron, and you'll you'll be entered. In addition to that, all levels of Patreon are gonna get to, to see my live feed. So I'm gonna do live feed specific things for two purposes. One, to interact with you guys, hang out, get some feedback, answer questions, any questions you want, rapid fire them at me, we're doing them Patre patrons only though. Also on that live, it's around the first, I think I'm going to try to do the first Thursday of every month at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's what I did last month. It was a good time that worked for me. It seemed to work for a lot of you guys. The live videos are going to be accessible if you can't make it at that time to patrons. So if you want to watch it the next day, you can catch what you missed on the live. During the live, I'm going to be doing a, the random number generator and picking the winners right then and there. Question some people ask is, if I won last month, can I still win again this month? And I'm gonna say, yes, you can. If by some chance the same winner that won last month wins again, they're gonna win, and I'm gonna just on the fly do a second giveaway to a second winner, and so that way there's gonna be a new winner every month, but at the same time, you have potential to win multiple months in a row. So that's how that's gonna work on Patreon. A little bit more about Patreon as I'm kind of, so I don't know if you realize, I just started a Patreon last month. I, I didn't know anything about it. I was trying not to join it for a while, but it's really cool. I'm using Patreon. So a lot of people use Patreon to give like early access to a video or something. And I, nothing wrong with that. If you're, if you have a Patreon and you do that, that's cool. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, say that's not cool, that's cool. But for me, I don't really care. Like I'm, I'm fine waiting another day to see the video. There's nothing I need to see early. I don't really care. But some some fans are su super into that. So I get it. 
but I'm not going to be doing that because A, I'm not organized enough. I just, I upload the video and publish it and I don't have time to be doing it early and remembering it to pre-release and then release it later. That's a lot of extra, it sound, doesn't sound like much work, but it all adds up. And the idea is I'm trying to streamline my processes, so I'm not doing that. So I'm using Patreon specifically to get feedback from you guys on future videos moving forward that kind of stuff. So sometimes I'll post public content to Patreon just to get some general feedback from whoever is over there and not a Patreon of myself, that's cool. And a lot of times I'm posting Patreon, Patron. So the platform is called Patreon, but I think each person is called a patron. So I may fumble over my words anyway. So patrons over there that are su supporting my patron, I'm doing private stuff over there. So I'm gonna do some votes on where the money goes. I'm gonna do just feedback on like reviews, what you wanna see me do. I'm gonna start doing some surveys, some polls on like which guns you wanna see reviewed next or what gear, stuff like that. So I'm really using Patreon in a way that if you're a patron, you help shape the channel, you help the direction of the channel, you help, you give me feedback on the actual gear that I'm gonna be reviewing on the channel. Granted, I'm gonna be doing a lot of videos and a lot of gear reviews regardless of what goes on at Patreon, but Patreon, Patreon is gonna be able to shape a lot of that. So I've, I've had a lot of fun over there actually. So I'm, I post questions and people are giving me answers and feedback and it's really nice to interact with you guys on a platform that's kind of a smaller, more dedicated group of, of the last line of defensers, I guess. Uh, so for all you LLOD crew, it's nice to be over there versus YouTube, I'm dealing with all kinds of trolls and random people and all kinds of stuff and it's hard for me to get to every comment. So Patreon is much more focused and much more kind of, it's, it's easier for me to manage, it's easier for my, me to wrap my head around. So I'm using it as a, a way to interact with, with you LLOD guys out there. Uh, in addition, like I mentioned earlier, I'm doing the live videos for patrons, so that's once a month. So it's a good way if you if you like kind of like me or the channel or if you want to help direct the future of the channel and stick with me and help kind of grow this whole last line of defense thing, it's a great way to get involved over there and in addition, giveaways. So yeah, here I'm wearing a multicam black hat. People have been asking me about this. I'm still in talks, kind of finalizing some details of my first order. My first order of hats is gonna be this. This is a, sorry again, excuse my long, crazy hair. First order is gonna be flex fit. I can't order every kind of hat imaginable because that's just not what I'm set up to do. So I'll probably do kind of like limited run batches of hats. The first one is gonna be flex fit multicam black with a very small, minimal, one inch or less black, I believe. I'm not sure. It's gonna be one of the colors of the multicam black. So it's just subdued. So it's not screaming in your face. You're not walking around with a LLOD billboard. Uh, it's just gonna be like, it's gonna be hidden. It's just gonna look like a black multicam hat, which I love. I love these hats. I, I told you, I don't know if you remember, I got a regular multicam one uh, as like a sample at SHOT Show and I've just been kind of wearing it nonstop. But it was kind of in your face multicam. I actually had a couple people ask if I served um, and I didn't. So I don't want to act like I'm stealing valor and I wasn't, you know, I'm just wearing like these normal clothes, but I was wearing a multicam hat and people asked if I served and that gets a little awkward because then I'm like, no. And then it's like, oh, you didn't. Well, I did. Why haven't you served? Why are you wearing a multicam hat? Because some some military people are are like that, like either you served and you're a man or you haven't and you're you're nothing. And I, I get it. And I have full respect for the military. My dad was in the army uh, for 27 or 28 years. So that's cool. But I don't, you know. Multicam black, I'm not gonna get that that question. So that's kind of why I'm I like multicam black better than regular multicam. Obviously, if you're out in the woods, multicam's gonna work better. Okay, so you got a little bit of rambling in at the end of this video. For those of you that are into rambling. So that's that's it. Holster business is still good too, if you're wondering. I do make and sell holsters. Um, probably I'm shooting for in the next month or two ideally if things go smoothly and my processes pick up and kind of the guys that I have teamed with to help kind of run and manage uh, my holster gig. If all that comes through, I'm gonna be launching my site probably in a couple months, maybe a month, maybe two, but no promises, it might be three, who knows. Uh, 
And with that, once I kind of get everything streamlined, I'm going to be expanding to making different types of holsters. I have a couple other holsters uh, designs out there that I'm kind of starting to prototype. So holster business is going to be good. I'm hoping to expand to other stuff. I, I have like some belt prototypes. I have some pen prototypes. I have a lot of cool, cool ideas in the works coming up for last line of defense as uh, on the like manufacturing, building, creating side, in addition to the videos, but a lot of cool, a lot of cool video projects coming up too. So a lot of cool things in the works for last line of defense that I'm really excited about. And for those that don't know, I, I do still have a full-time job. I'm a web developer for Rehab Creative. Rehab Creative is my web development company. So if you need a website, and I'm not talking like a $500 website. We, we work on more higher end. So if you have a budget, if you work for a government agency, we work with a lot of schools and universities. Uh, we work with some e-commerce stuff as well. But if you have a budget, reach out to me, rehabcreative, all one word, dot com. You can email me direct on my, my uh, web development line, mike at rehabcreative.com. If you want to talk web work, again, we're not like a, we're not doing charity web work. We're very busy, but we're looking to grow and we'd love to expand. And I'd love to work with uh, customers that are, you know, Second Amendment and everything. We are very pro Second Amendment. So if you're a, if you're a gun site or anything and looking to hire a web developer, you're looking for new web work. I don't know why I got into this, I guess, because I was talking about a website, but yeah. I do web development. My brother owns the company. I work for him. That's my full-time gig. I love I love coding and programming and solving solving unique web problems. So if you're looking for a website, uh, hit me up um, again. If you have, if you have a budget, because I get hit up quite a bit that from people that are like, "Oh, I have this idea for a website, and I have five hundred dollar budget, and that's cool." And there's web developers out there, but it's not really like it's not Rehab Creative's thing. Yeah. Okay, this video ended up being way longer than I intended because I started rambling and stuff. But anyway, hope you liked it. Uh, if you found it helpful, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Again, the giveaway over on Patreon. I'll probably make a post on Patreon to give some details. Again, I'm super new to it. I'm not trying to shove Patreon down your down your throat or anything like that. So if you're if you're anti Patreon, I get it. No worries. I still love you. Uh, you're still part of the LLOD YouTube family. But yeah, if you're into like a more closer knit kind of community over there, uh, I'm going to try and kind of build it into something cool. And I'm just learning the system. So I'm getting getting kind of settled over there, but but really liking it so far. All right, guys, as always, take care.